If you happen to be in Burma, these days it's also called Myanmar, make sure to visit this well-known site. A gold-leaf-covered boulder sits upon the edge of a cliff, and a small pagoda is built on top of it. The impressive thing about the rock is that it only lightly touches the cliff for support. In fact, it looks like the boulder will fall any minute now, but it has been standing like that for centuries. On top of that, the pagoda built upon it is not really a recent addition, so it's quite an unusual sight to see. The rock seems to be saying, gravity? Hmm, I don't care about that stuff. The legend has it that what keeps the boulder in place is a single strand of Buddha's hair. Well, I don't know about that, but you can check out the rock for yourself and see that it's not attached to the cliff by anything. And yet, it's not budged for 2,500 years. Something must be at work here, huh? If there ever was a thing that said, I defy gravity out loud, it's the stone of Davaska. The huge 300-ton boulder stands precariously on the edge of a cliff and rocks a little bit from side to side in the wind. People even checked it by putting glass bottles under one of its edges. They exploded with another movement of the rock. Unfortunately, today you can't see this wonder of nature as it was a century ago. In 1912, the boulder suddenly dropped from its perch, which it had occupied for literally hundreds of years. The people in the nearby town of Tandil were so sad about this event that 95 years later, in 2007, they decided to restore the stone. Well, not exactly put it together chip by chip, they made a plastic replica of the rock and put it on the same spot and even in the same position. So even today, coming by Tandil, you can see its famous balancing boulder. More of a symbol now, of course, because it's no longer rocking and only weighs 9 tons, but instantly recognizable nonetheless. Remember this place from the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind? If not, you should go watch it, but not right now. This place doesn't make you feel like you're witnessing some magic and doesn't really trick gravity right before your eyes. Sounds almost boring compared with the rest of the sites on my list, right? But the true mind-blowing feature of Devil's Tower is that scientists can explain how it came to existence in the first place. You see, it's an 867-foot rock formation with walls so steep they're basically vertical. But that isn't even the main thing. This piece of stone just rose amid rolling plains of Wyoming with nothing like it for miles and miles around. So how is it that such a flat landscape could have suddenly given birth to something so tall? Theories abound, but nobody has the answer yet. My theory? Well, perhaps here is where the Earth has a giant Audi belly button. Well then, you come up with a better theory. You're walking on a desolate plain. Nothing but dry cracked ground under your feet. No plants, no animals, just tall mountains off in the distance. Hard to believe this barren valley was once teeming with life. It used to be the bottom of a lake. As you're walking in the quiet solitude, you notice a trail. It looks as if someone was dragging a heavy bag for hundreds of feet. Intrigued, you follow the track. It leads you straight, then gently curves to one side or the other sometimes even making zigzags. Very odd indeed. Finally, you see the source of the trail, but it only adds more mystery. It's a huge stone lying alone in the middle of the plain. Who would want to push a rock that far? The answer is no one. The stone moved by itself. It's a phenomenon called sailing stones, and it's observed in several places in the US. In winter, the entire valley and huge rocks, some weighing as much as a horse, are iced over. This drastically reduces the friction between the stone and the ground. When the wind blows, the stone begins to slide. Once the ice melts, the track remains on the sand, and there sits a lonely traveler rock. Our next stop is Canada's Abraham Lake. It's frozen now. From a distance, it looks like the surface is covered in patches of snow. But as you get closer and step on the ice, you see the white patches are frozen bubbles inside the lake. Looks like thousands of frozen jellyfish. But don't even try to break the ice to investigate further. These bubbles are made of methane, a highly flammable gas. When any organic matter, like leaves, grass, insects, enters the lake, 
it becomes food for bacteria that release methane as a byproduct. That methane turns into tens of thousands of frozen disks as soon as it comes into contact with frozen water. As the ice melts, the bubbles burst and sizzle. You can also see this phenomenon on some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the methane bubbles can be as big as hot air balloons. It's a beautiful sight, but very dangerous. Carhenge is the weirdest landmark of Nebraska. Its author studied the real Stonehenge and created his own version out of old cars as a tribute to his father. Some cars stand like monoliths, others are connected into arches. When asked why he did all this, the creator of the construction said, hmm, why not? Another Stonehenge lookalike was found on the bottom of Lake Michigan in 2007. There's a group of rocks in a circle and carvings of a mastodon. This beast ceased existing over 10,000 years ago, so the carving has to be older than that. Its location is kept secret from the public. <laughs> Good luck finding it! Angkor Wat in Cambodia is the largest religious monument in the world. It takes days to see all of it and centuries to solve all its secrets. It's facing west, while all other temples of its kind faced east, where the sun rises. And all of its bas reliefs are read counterclockwise the opposite of normal. In one of the driest spots on Earth, the Atacama Desert in Chile, there's a hand coming out of the sand. Human helplessness, vulnerability, or the spirit that wins over anything. Everybody sees the statue their own way, and no one knows why it was placed in such a remote location. Right in the pavement outside the State Library of Victoria in Melbourne, there's another library, a sinking one. Is it symbol of disappearing knowledge, or a new civilization breaking through the ground to bring new wisdom? Eh, up to you. In the financial district of Paris, there's a giant thumb, which is an exact replica of its creator's digit. It's been around since 1965 and weighs the same as three elephants. It's not the only monument of its kind. There are other huge thumbs by the same artist spread across the world. The Hagar Kim, meaning Standing Stones, site in Malta, was completed around 3000 BCE. Some Stone Age genius, most likely using stone tools, managed to set the rocks in such a way that they could show the beginning and end of the year. On March 21st and September 21st, the sun is exactly in the middle. 3000 standing rocks were spread over present-day Brittany, France, in the Neolithic period. After centuries of trying, Scientists still can't tell the purpose of this largest collection of rocks in the world. It looks like it was created by a culture related to Stonehenge, which means travel and technology may have been in place long before we realized. In 1923, a guy in Florida who was dumped the day before his wedding started putting together the Coral Castle, a monument to lost love. How a 5-foot-tall man with a 4th grade education managed to lift stone blocks 8 times as heavy as a hippo all by himself will, of course, forever remain his secret. Sometimes lounging around in a jacuzzi can be incredibly relaxing. But this hot body of water takes things to a whole new level. Deep in the Amazon forests lies a floating river in the forested region of Mayantayaku that boasts temperatures so hot that any person or animal that falls into it literally boils alive from the inside out. That's right! This river runs at an unbelievable 196 degrees Fahrenheit. Dang, that's hot! Locals use the water to brew tea, and sometimes they cook with it. While this river's high temperature is incredibly intriguing, what makes this natural phenomenon a mystery is the fact that no one can figure out what makes the water so hot. According to geophysicist Andres Ruzo, boiling waters are typically attached to an active volcano or magmatic system, like the Boiling River Trail in Yellowstone National Park in the US. But in the town of Mayantuyaku, there are no active volcanoes within 400 miles. So, what's heating it up so drastically? Over the centuries, Residents of this town believe that the river had magical healing powers and used it spiritually and medicinally. Russo guesses that hot geothermal waters pour in from cracks in the earth, heating the temperature of the river. But this has yet to be scientifically proven. Meanwhile, 
if someone hunting animals illegally accidentally falls into the river and boils alive? Well then, we'll have a poached poacher. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Can you believe that there's a place on Earth with its own ecosystem and atmosphere similar to another planet? Well, start believing. Movao Cave, located in southeastern Romania, remained closed in complete darkness for a whopping 5.5 million years. It wasn't until workers discovered the cave when they were looking for a place to build that anyone learned about it. Scientists carved out an opening to the cave and found that a completely sustained ecosystem was thriving inside. As a pathway was carved through the rock past numerous tunnels, scientists found a lake of sulfuric water that stank like rotten eggs. The air was filled with hydrogen sulfide and had 100 times more carbon dioxide than Earth's air contains. Needless to say, this air is completely toxic. What's even crazier? is that a whole ecosystem has been existing in this cave, with 33 species that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. This cave gives us a glimpse of what could possibly exist on other planets with completely different atmospheres. How it managed to exist on Earth all this time without anyone knowing is rather unbelievable, isn't it? Now, let's head south of the equator to one of the most isolated places on this planet, Easter Island in Polynesia. This is where you can find nearly 900 Moai statues created by the Rapa Nui people. These figures can weigh up to 90 tons, which makes transporting them pretty much impossible. So, how did they construct and move them for hundreds of years, dating from 1400 to 1650? The most bizarre theories out there put it down to aliens. But something tells me the Rapa Nui probably used a different, less extraterrestrial and more exhausting method. They hired movers. Well, maybe. Well, the name says it all. The South Atlantic Anomaly is part of Earth, where natural radiation flows out of control. Astronauts who try to take a peek at this dangerous zone experience hallucinations, and even satellites can't take pictures of it while paranormal enthusiasts swear it's a portal to another dimension. Science has an alternative explanation. This spot off the eastern coast of South America is where the Earth's magnetic field is weakest. This is apparently what causes the strange phenomena. Oh, sounds like a theme park a little. Another impressive megalith, this time in Zimbabwe. It was once home to around 20,000 people, but it's now a ghost town. Yet, to this day, there's no explanation as to where these people went. There aren't any accounts of major migrations, military conflict, nothing. There aren't even any myths or legends connected to it, which leaves us with one of the world's greatest mysteries. This place off the western coast of Australia in the Indian Ocean has very odd geological events. Huge earthquakes, one after another, wouldn't seem so strange if this spot was a place where two tectonic plates meet. But it isn't. The Wharton Basin is well within the borders of the Australian plate. But researchers are pretty sure that a new fault line is forming here. Another portal, perhaps? Maybe that would explain the planes that vanish in an instant. Poor Australia has vile vortices on both sides. Heading over to the east, there's the Loyalty Islands. A lot of strange whirlpools were found on this patch of the South Pacific, as well as plenty of geologic activity. But what about the island scientists say disappeared there in 2012? Well, before you don your tinfoil hat, I'll let you know that there never really was an island in that spot to begin with. It was on maps, sure, but that was a mistake from the start, probably due to someone goofing up the coordinates. So, technically, scientists undiscovered this island. They're on opposite ends of this planet, but they've got two things in common – ice and odd disappearances. The North Pole was where an expedition of 129 men got lost and found 150 years later. The South Pole, however, has its own way of terrifying us. Some researchers in Antarctica were left speechless when they found the remains of what seemed like pre-human alien civilizations. Oh, come on now. During the first week of January 2018, unusually cold weather in the Northeast United States froze the Atlantic Ocean in North Falmouth, Massachusetts. 
What's more, the ocean was frozen so thoroughly that people were walking on the waves. Now that's obviously something you don't see every day. On February 20th and 21st, 2018, people in the northeastern part of the U.S. experienced one of the most extraordinary weather events of recent times, and it was a heat wave. Yep, in February. In fact, it was the most impressive winter heat wave since official weather records started in the 1800s. For example, in Freiburg, Maine, people were taking off their coats after the temperature had risen to a baffling 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In Fitchburg, Massachusetts, confused people put on sandals when they saw the temperature outside, 80 degrees. The same was happening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the temperature had reached 83 degrees, and in Wells, Maine, where thermometers showed 77 degrees. Even though the island of Newfoundland in Canada probably can't be called the warmest place on Earth, it's still not that cold. But imagine you must shovel snow in front of your house just several days before your summer vacation. Well, that's exactly what happened on the island in June 2018. A cold storm that came from the coast of Newfoundland covered several regions of the island with a 2-inch layer of snow. Even those who had been living on the islands their whole life were impressed. Nobody could remember that much snow so late in the year. On top of that, the temperature broke all the records as well. During the summer in Newfoundland, it's about 66 degrees Fahrenheit on average, and 90 degrees on the hottest day. But that infamous June shocked people with only 37 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. Yeah, that's pretty chilly.